Hi, everybody. Josh Byerly here in Mission Control Houston. I'm joined by my friend Ed Powers, who is a uh, flight surgeon here at NASA. And, you know, we talk a lot about uh, experiment work and what the crew is doing. They do quite a bit of human research and things like that on their own bodies while they're up there. But I uh, figured, you know, it'd be a good chance to get a flight surgeon in here and actually talk about, you know, what you do, first of all, as a flight surgeon, because there's a whole lot more than I think what people realize. And also, you know, what are some of the difficulties of dealing with a crew member who's not here on Earth? So, first of all, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Talk just a minute about what you do on a, just a daily basis. Okay. Well, uh, flight surgeons are uh, kind of critical to uh, ma maintaining the, you know, the status, health status of the crew members by monitoring them, basically. Um, every day we... Um, the folks who are assigned to crew members to uh, look out for them and um, on a weekly basis we interview them and make sure for about 15 minutes at a time make sure they're doing well in orbit but it really begins about two years before they launch the uh, flight surgeons who are assigned to an astronaut basically get to know them very well and help in their training so that they know what to do in a medical emergency on board the space station they go through various training sessions including uh, running uh, cardiac resuscitation and, uh, and go through various simulations and uh, so this allows us to get to know the crew members very well, and we develop a relationship, a very good working relationship with them, and an amount of trust, you know, that right. goes along with that. What do they What do they have up on orbit? I mean, they, they've got you know the crew healthcare, basically what amounts to a mini hospital on board. But talk mm -hmm. about, I mean, because you can't just run down to the drugstore and get you know get some ibuprofen or something if you, if you need it. So how well are they stocked? What do they have up there? Well, they have a variety of commonly used medicines, you know, Tylenol and various other things are there. Right. But uh, we also have um, medicines that we think could be useful in case some potential emergencies could occur. You know, we have the advanced cardiac life support medications on right. board that they're trained with and, uh, and various antibiotics and things that we think might be necessary if something were to happen up there. So talk as a doctor, how, you know, doctors use a lot of their, their senses, they, their, mm -hmm. their sight, their hearing, they listen, you know, the, the touch. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have any of that really, you know, whenever your crew members 250 miles up in space going around the earth. So how, how difficult is that? What, what kind of challenges do you have? Well, it's a bit of a challenge and that's part of, part of the reason why we developed such a close relationship with them in this pre-launch time frame in the training is because uh, we get to know sort of what they're capable of, of doing and how and what their experience level is and how they approach a problem when it comes to medical issues. And uh, so, th so it is a little bit of a challenge, but at the same time, uh, as we get to know them very closely, we're able to, to trust their eyes and ears and uh, work with them to try to diagnose any issues that go on. Fortunately, they tend to be extremely healthy when we launch them, yeah. which is very helpful, but occasionally something will come, come about and of course we have the luxury once in a while of having a physician astronaut on board right and uh, that makes our jobs quite a bit easier so let's talk about uh, we were out uh, i guess it was a couple of weeks ago out at the uh, national space biomedical research institute here mm -hmm. in houston they just opened up a brand new facility here and there's a lot of scientists there and, and, and doctors mds phds talking about miniaturization and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, from what i understand that we used to have a very large ultrasound cart on board the station that took up an entire rack and now we've got things down to basically the size of a laptop. So to talk a little bit about how the space station and, you know, you know, we sort of force ourselves to go small and go efficient. Mm -hmm. How does that lead to better stuff here on Earth for, for hospitals and things like that? Well, uh, of course, smaller is better when it comes, as long as you can keep the same fidelity, smaller right. is better. And, uh, and as far as um, keeping track of inventory and launching into orbit, and that sort of a thing uh, from our standpoint is very helpful. But there are remote applications as well. You know, there are places in the world where you just can't get medical care uh, at the level that you would see, say, in Houston. Right. So to have a remote capability of something small and transportable is very helpful when you get out away from civilization a bit. Yeah. How much do the crew members do, uh, you know, basically finding out about how their own bodies react to being in space and, and what is that going to teach us going on? I mean, well, you know, is it the more that we investigate it, the more we learn? I mean, is there more mysteries? Because, you know, we've talked about how We've even learned that the immune system reacts differently being up there uh, with no gravity. So what what do we learn? That's true. There's a number of uh, research um, studies going on, associated with universities that are looking at the immune system, and there's a little bit of a decreased immune response when you get up on orbit. You know, tendency to to maybe be a little bit more susceptible to getting a cold or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. There are also bone density issues. You know, as you go in microgravity. Gravity is not pulling down on the bones. It's not the stimulation there to keep the bones healthy. Right. So we have learned how to supplement that by doing daily exercise, both uh, aerobic and, and resistive exercise. That seems to be helping to uh, mediate that problem with bone density and muscle weakness. Um, 
And then, of course, we recently have come across uh, an issue with the eyes and vision changes in space mm -hmm. that we uh, have gotten a little bit more detailed understanding what's going on there as far as fluid shifting towards the towards the head when gravity is not pulling it down anymore, it seems to um, affect the fine structures of the eye and uh, produce potentially permanent changes in the vision. And so we've been using some instrumentation up there now that hasn't been up there before. Small size ultrasonography to look at the eye. There's also um, a very high level optical camera that we're going to be flying soon that uh, will be able to take a really good look at the back of the eye and try to assess the, the issues there. We think it could be could be related to fluid shifting along with high salt diet that happens to be on the space station due to the fact that the food has to be preserved for a long yeah. time up there. And uh, maybe carbon dioxide levels may have something to do with it, so we try to keep the carbon dioxide levels down. There are a number of factors that we're looking at up there that may affect certain situations here on Earth. You mentioned exercise. Uh, have you guys seen a difference in you know the crew members coming back? I mean, Ed's one of the people that goes over to uh, Russia and Kazakhstan. We spent many an hour on uh, yeah. helicopters. Helicopters and uh, airplanes going over there, but have you guys seen a difference in you know, now that you've got sort of a variety of different exercise equipment up there? The crew members exercise uh, quite a bit during the day. Do you see a difference now whenever they're coming back and how their bodies are reacting? Yes, definitely. There, many of them are coming back and uh, even a little bit better shape than when they launched because when they get a little distracted the first, I mean, the last uh, month or so before they launch, and right. sometimes exercise falls off. So when they get up there and and they have a concentrated exercise program, daily exercise program, you know at least an hour of resistive exercise, at least an hour of uh, cardiovascular workout every day, then sometimes uh, they, they actually come back in a little bit better shape. Now, we, I think we finally, over the years, and many crews, I think we finally have got the right approach to this, and uh, we've got the right exercise equipment on board, and they're actually doing very well. That's good. So talk a bit about your background. I mean, we, we get this question all the time. How did you get the job at NASA? So how do you go from medical school into being, being a flight surgeon? Well, uh, I grew up in the Chicago area, and so I went to medical school at Rush University in Chicago, and I uh, was very interested in surgery and emergency medicine. And so I did a postgraduate training program, first a uh, general surgery internship, and then uh, two additional years of emergency medicine and became an emergency medicine specialist. And it just so happens I've always had the uh, fondness of flying. I started flying when I was 15 yeah. uh, with a friend's airplane, and so I was trying to combine those different interests, emergency medicine and flying and space program, and I uh, wound up doing a, another residency program in aerospace medicine, two-year program in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, eventually wound up at NASA. So I've been working as an emergency physician and an aerospace medicine physician for uh, much of the last 10 or 15 years. Is it still fascinating to you? Oh, it? yes, very much so. Lots to learn. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for joining us, Ed. It's Dr. Ed Powers, uh, one of the flight surgeons here at NASA. If you would like to learn more about all these different types of experiments that the that the crew is actually doing on a daily basis about you know with their own bodies and how the human body reacts to being in space you can always log on to the NASA website just go to www.nasa.gov/station just click on research and take a look at expedition 30 so thanks again ed good talking with you josh take care